This episode is brought to you by Canada Post. Custom solutions for complex problems brought to you by Canada's address experts. Visit them at canadapost.ca. It is time for this week in location-based marketing, episode number 75. Recording this live between Asif and I on Sunday, April 29th, 2012. Today, we bring to life some of the most relevant stories from the location-based marketing world, including Kodak, finally trying to make some money in mobile. Mobile ticketing with Masabi, GoPogo and Project Noah launch, and Foursquare. Also, looking for some revenue. All this, plus a busy week in funding and special guest Alexis Zamkow from Canada Post. Coming up right now. Hello, everybody. My name is Rob Woodbridge from Untether.tv, and with me, as always, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, take it away. Asif Khan from the Location Based Marketing Association. Asif, what a week it was. What a week it was. People are talking about revenue finally, aren't they? Yeah, it's good to see. It's good to see uh, some old old giants uh, reemerge and uh, you know trying to uh, make something of themselves in mobile uh, with Kodak. Uh, we're about to talk about them, and a little bit later we'll be talking about Foursquare and uh, you know hopefully hopefully uh, so, some revenue models emerging around that. So well, we yeah, got a big show. We definitely, definitely got a big show because we've got uh, not only that we've got our sponsor uh, Canada Post coming on with Alexis who's going to come and yep. you got a chance to sit down and talk with Alexis. Um, and just so much news going on, but let's start with any, anything going on with the LBMA. What are you guys doing? Uh, th- there's quite a bit going on. I mean, we're, we're busy gearing up for our, our next round of events. And, um, you know, so we're involved with a bunch of conferences. Uh, we've got, you know, more chapter events coming. So excited because we're about to launch uh, in uh, first week of June, June 7th. We're launching a, a new chapter in Montreal. Um, so expanding our Canadian footprint a little bit, another event in Toronto, uh, at the end of the month uh, of June as well. Um, so plenty going on, uh, and then, you know, the, the, lots of conferences in between. So, um, involved with the, uh, the European location business summit, uh, involved with all sorts of mobile retail commerce, uh, types of things. So, the, I mean, it's, it's a busy, busy season right now. We're in the, the sort of the heart of conference season so yeah plenty uh plenty to talk about well i'm i'm ecstatic i can't wait uh you know for montreal we got to get an ottawa chapter there's got to be something like that but uh you know piece by piece i love what's going on well and of course of course we have the untether uh talks event well, so that's, yeah that's true uh you know we don't have uh our website will go live may 1st it is untethertalks.com and uh, this is a uh a Seif is on the roster front and center this is a if you've ever wondered what the future holds for mobile and the impact that mobile is going to have on our lives. The things like, uh, you know, finance and payments and marketing and location and retail and education and health. This is the conference for you. It's two days, June 26th, 27th at the Glenn Gould Studio in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Tickets will be on sale starting May 1st. The website will be launched on May 1st. So on tethertalks.com, I implore you to check it out. Hey, and if you uh, you feel like you should be speaking there, there are still some open slots. Um, we got uh, 58 days until that conference kicks off on tethertalks.com. Thanks, Asif. Appreciate that. Why don't no we worries. jump right into the first story? Why don't we? We're just, we might as well get this over. Kodak has filed for bankruptcy, yet they are finally looking at mobile. They realize that, hey, you know, the future, as their CEO says, the future of photography is mobile. All of a sudden, something, some kind of light went on in uh, inside of Kodak's mind. Well, maybe it was that one billion dollar Instagram Facebook deal that all of a sudden made the CEO wake up. I, I don't know, but uh, you know, certainly mobile and photos and photo sharing and location based photos and all of that it, it has been hot. Um, you know, there's all sorts of players in the space. Uh, obviously, the Instagram deal, you know, being a big trigger point, I think, for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, so Kodak's here. Uh, they've had an app for a while, um, but they, you know, they've added a bunch of new features to it. And and really, what it is is it's you know it's it's a typical, you know, photo sharing app. Um, but you know, Kodak's always had this uh, this you know connection to printing photos. And so, really, what the app is 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 you know, or so the new features around the app are, are this partnerships with Target stores and CVS stores. 
that uh, from the app itself, you know, you take a photo, you share a photo, and you can basically send a, a photo into the queue to be printed at one of those stores and, and for pickup. So all directly from the app, um, you know, closest store, location-based capabilities connected in that. So, you know, pretty simple. Um, you know, nothing nothing really complicated or, or you know, crazy uh, innovative here, but, uh, you know, sort of a, an expected feature and good to see Kodak stepping up. Yeah, it is. I mean, Kodak just reported a couple of days ago a $366 million loss in Q1. So, I mean, at 20 cents a print, uh, you know, obviously this isn't there, the future of, because if this is the future of, they're, they they are going to remain <laughs> insolvent. However, they also sold their photo sharing service um, to Shutterfly, I think it was, and, and uh, like for 22 yep. million bucks. <laughs> and there's such a discrepancy yep. between the $1 billion dollars for for Instagram and the twenty two million dollars for Kodak, it just it's a sad day. I mean, we we've talked about it a lot. I know uh, Douglas mm -hmm. uh, Soltis over on uh, um, on Tether and I uh, for a Where's the Money talked about this. This is Kodak's loss. What Instagram did. This was their opportunity. And and um, I I don't believe that these guys have a hope in hell. And I don't believe that a one hour processing time from from your camera. Or you're from your phone to a uh, Walgreens or whatever is going to save these guys. They're still thinking like they're it's print. They're still thinking that way. It's insane. It's insane to me. Yeah. Well, I agree with you. I mean, as I said, I think there's nothing really innovative or or different or, or um, you know amazing. This is stuff that you know you you would just expect to be in the app. I was actually when I read it, I was surprised that it wasn't already there. What do you mean all of a sudden I can now print at CVS or Target from the app? I mean, and the only thing that I saw that was, you know, sort of new is you know, it's now available on Android. Um, and, and apparently now you can you can uh, share directly from the app your photo to to a Pinterest board. Well, I mean, you can do that in any of the photo sharing apps. So, I, like, I don't understand, you know, what, what they're expecting to, uh, you know, the market's reaction to this to be because it, it, it's like, you know, why, why weren't you there six months ago? or a year ago or you know uh, i don't know uh, anyways yeah. too, too little, little too, too little way too late and that's exactly what i was going to say is that these guys um when you start to think of something like uh sincerely and uh their postagram and uh like those guys have been out for two years um printing postcards yeah. and and what was that I, I can't remember for the life of me we featured it on uh one on a previous episode where it was like the kodak the instagram the uh the, the, the um the polaroid where you can send send your photos to a digital camera or digital printer somewhere around the world, and and they were they were looking at getting it funded. These are the things that that Kodak should have been doing. But good night, Kodak. Irrelevant. You've just fallen off the face yeah. of the earth. You sold the one thing that might have value, and now you're going back to print. I say, yeah, you know, and, and I, I mean, there's other things that I like. I don't see in this app, you know, that should be there, like. You know, and, and guys at Kodak, if you're listening, like, please, like, you know, give us a call because, you know, we live and breathe, Rob and I, mobile on location 24-7, 365. So, you know, we see a lot of this stuff out there. But, you know, like, wh why don't you have, you know, simple things like, you know, tracking somebody's location as they travel about a city or a theme park or wherever they're taking all these photos and, you know, starting to kind of build that history of, of you know, your vacation, like sort of what Goala was originally trying to do, you know, or, or Hip Geo uh, from that perspective. Um, I mean, there's so many things that just make sense to be in this app that aren't in this app, and I don't get no. it. I'm I'm lost with this. So good good riddance. Uh, uh, you know, another massive company succumbing to the wave, uh, the seventh wave called mobile. And um, good good night, Kodak. Just like if if, if this was a um, yeah, just put a bullet in it. So Kodak launches this right. new <laughs> photo sharing and printing service, and uh, I think I'm giving it a way 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 thumbs down. Uh, good night. Could be that I'm a little sick, that I'm a little cynical, but. Uh, I don't see it. So let's move on to the second story. Um, the second story, this is actually pretty, this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I think it's the evolution of like tickets, but uh, the MBTA partnering with Masabi on mobile transit tickets. Say goodbye to printed tickets. Yay. And this is when Kodak is going to decide to get into printed tickets. But go with, <laughs> go with the MBTA story. Yeah, so MBTA, that's the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. And effectively what this is, is the very first U.S., it's a U.S. first, smartphone rail ticketing system uh, that will be launching this fall. So they serve 1.3 million people a day. 
uh, on their on their rail system. Masabi, uh, who they partner with, is a UK uh, London based uh, company in in mobile ticketing. And basically, what this is is you're on the train system. You've got you know that that sort of uh, pass, or you bought a you know a day pass or whatever it is. And you got the guys, you know, coming around and checking everybody's pass to make sure that you've got a ticket to be on that train. Well, instead of that, now basically, you know, the, the ticket is your smartphone. And so, interesting little technology here. So, what they've done is, is that uh, instead of lining up at vending machines and buying all these tickets, you know, you simply, you know, show your smartphone, and it's got an animated watermark uh, with a background color to that watermark that changes um, every day. So it's 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 you know, so so that they have this validation going on. It's not the same watermark all the time uh, or the same background color on the watermark every time. So on Monday it might be this or, you know, they might change it up randomly. Um, you know, so that's your validation for, sort of for, you know, proof of purchase or, or, you know, the rights to be on there. And then to back that up, there's also a, um, a barcode that can be scanned, you know, if they really want to sort of uh, you know, validate it or have closer inspection than just a visual uh, look at it. So, you know, pretty simple, but pretty cool, right? I mean, you know, paper, paper's gone. Uh, you know, don't need to line up and buy tickets from machines anymore. iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. So, hey, I like it. I, I, I mean, I do too. It's a natural evolution. And, and again, we, we, we talk about this quite a bit. And, you know, I don't think we have to go into this in great detail. I think it's great. But when you add that layer location, you're eliminating a lot of the fraudulent stuff that goes on. You're, you know, and, and I love the way that they're doing with different backgrounds. I mean, this is, it's just innovative thinking around a problem that we all have. Challenge now is you can't forget your smartphone. You cannot forget your phone or else, uh, but most people forget their wallet ahead of forgetting their phone anyway. So that's pretty cool. The MBTA partners with Masabi on mobile transit ticket system. And this is the first in the U.S., right? Yes. I love it. And, and you know, it, it, I, I, I love this because it's the European influence here. This has been going on in Europe for quite some time, just like Wi-Fi on trains and transit, public transportation came over to the, the U.S. and Canada after it, it uh, really took off on the bullet trains in Europe. So um, I, I like this kind of stuff. And we all know that this is just the beginning. We're going to at some point uh, have the option to pay cash or not, tickets or not. Um, but we're also going to have the option to just leave your money at home. And I think that that's very cool. Yeah, and I just think, you know, I love this kind of thing because I think the transportation industry in general, I think, is just ripe for uh, mobile and location-based services. You know, we talked about uh, actually another UK thing a while ago, a um, company called Trans Pennine Express, if you remember that conversation, Rob, um, and what they were doing with, um, you know, sort of uh, connectivity on the trains and, you know, providing sort of real-time location directions and, and traffic updates and all kinds of things to travelers so that when you got off, you knew, you knew where you were going, maps of the stations, all that kind of stuff. Um, so pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this. I, I, I love when I start to see this kind of stuff. And, and, um, and, you know, we haven't even talked about, and we're going to start to talk about this. I think in the next year, we're going to start talking about that marketing layer around these ticketing and, and the opportunities for auxiliary and, and, you know, alternative sources of revenue for these, uh, for the for yeah. uh, transportation like Transpennine, so I mean, like, like, like I'm, you know, not not to not to uh, to give these guys too many ideas, but like, I mean, uh, you know, take something like this where you know you're on a train now, we know you're there, um, and potentially we know your destination where you're about to get off, like, um, and and what what if you could, you know, send through your mobile device a an order for. Um, Dunkin' Donuts, and when you got off the train, there was one in the station, and it was ready for you to pick up. Or what if you were Kodak, and you could take a picture and have it picked up at a Walgreens with one-hour printing? There you go. Oh, man. Kodak. Kodak. Um, so MBTA, we, we love this. We love this. And, and um, I, you know, this is the kind of stuff that's innovative. We love this, and then our, you know, not, not this story, but the one after that with Project Noah. Uh, we love this kind of innovative technology, so mm. good on them. But before we get to Project Noah, we're going to talk about this, this uh, uh, the launch of GoPogo. I have a video, so I'm going to play this video. It's about a minute long. There is talking on it, so don't stress about it. Um, we're going to go to it right now, and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Here we go. This is Oscar. This is Oscar String. This was a typical day in the life of Oscar. But then, Oscar Ooh. saw another string. And this string was different. This string was exciting. And this is how it all began. It started off with fish and sticks. 
then moved on to Bangers and Nash. And this was the moment where everything changed. It was her. He had to find her, but she was not at Banana Joe's. And she was certainly not at the local head shrinker. He followed her string to the glitter room. And then Oscar soldiered on, on until the sunrise, until finally, he saw her. Every string is a story. What's yours? Go Pogo. Every string is a story. What? What is this? Well, I mean, th this is not, like I mentioned briefly, uh, Hip Geo. Um, and really what this is, is, you know, so much of the location-based services, the apps that we see out there in the marketplace today um, have been sort of, you know, uh, tracking or engaging with with a user at a, a specific point in time um and and so what this is is go go is really saying yeah that's interesting and that's and that's cool and it's important but what's equally important in their world is you know how those points in time are connected in what they're calling a string you know throughout the course of a day so, so you know it's more like looking at you know your life you know on a daily basis and and all the connections of all the different locations that you touch um, and, and stringing them together. And, and that's really what, what this is. So it basically, you know, collects all those experiences, bookmarking your travels throughout the day, creates a string. And, and at the end of the day, you can basically go to this, you know, sort of library that they've created of user generated strings and you can discover the experiences of others and share your, your experience and all that kind of stuff. So interesting. It is interesting. Uh, how different is this really from, uh, from something like path? Is it? Or is it is it along the same lines? Um, but it's it's just much more open, right? It's like they, they called it a like a three dimensional or a multi dimensional version of the Facebook timeline, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's exactly what it is. I mean, we're talking about you know so, sort of shareable social objects here, right? So, um, I mean, there's there's certainly a social magnification element to it. I think Path is is more. Um, I would argue path is is further along the social magnification side of things like Facebook than is this. I think this is more about you know sort of you as a user having a a history of what you've done um and it it, it is shareable you, you can go there and experience you know what other people have done um but you know the the key question that they tr they're trying to address I believe is you know a, as a user of Foursquare for example. You know, I go, I check in, I do my things and whatever. But when I go and then ask the question, well, you know, where was I on July the 6th last year? And what did I do that day? Well, I can go look up that string in this context and find out, right? Uh, and that's a much more difficult thing to do inside of, you know, uh, an app like Foursquare. Yeah, I, I guess, I, you know, I just have a, I, I like these, but, you know, there's so many that are similar that we talk about here that, that I just wonder how this all fits in and, and where these all works and how I can incorporate these into my day. That's all. I mean, it's just, it's, it's some, right. sometimes it's a challenge, right? I think that that's the key. It's, it is a challenge. Well, so uh, GoPogo, I think that's a gopogo.com. Go and take a look at it. They launched, um, you know, there's a caveat that their UI is terrible. You don't really get a good sense of what it does on the website. They don't have an iPhone app out yet. Uh, so a lot of it is limiting. But they did launch, and um, I, I really think that they need an and they iPhone app. Bucks. What's that? And, and they raised and they three raised million. million dollars. Yeah, yeah. God, there's so much money going around. Who wants to invest in <laughs> us? Come on, we're there good you people. Go. I need some new threads. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> our fourth story. We both like this story. Yeah. Project Noah. The Love. launch of Project Noah. I, now, this is a little bit of a longer video. I'm going to play it through until I get bored with it. But I, I, I'm a big fan of uh, of this, and I know you are as well. And we're just going to let this run through, and we'll see what it is at the end of this. And uh, we'll each get our opinion. But Project Noah, very cool. And remember, like Noah's Ark, right? Anyways, here's here's mm -hmm. Project Project Noah. Project NOAA's goal is to mobilize a new generation of nature explorers. We're building the most engaging and welcoming community, and as we continue to grow, we're collecting vast amounts of critical data. 
Project Know has been used in classrooms, it's been used by elementary school students, it's been used by doctoral researchers and grad students, and it was recently used for BioBlitz by National Geographic and the National Park Services. You can be a seasoned scientist or a beginning amateur. We want to see your contributions. BioBlitz is a great event. It's a 24-hour inventory of species. This year we used Project NOAA as a way to really get data back from field stations in a more timely manner, but also as a way of sort of advertising what we're doing with BioBlitz to the whole world. It's, it's just easy to use. It doesn't take someone very long to, to launch it and figure out how to submit a spotting. It's just very cool to know that a scientist is getting the information that you're putting up. Through wireless smartphones and applications like Project NOAA, it's really a way to build this electronic community, get people out and engaged and having a personal stake in preservation and education and the like. I think that um, projects like NOAA, if the software can start reaching a lot of people and people can start collecting data and becoming one of a thousand or ten thousand or a million activists out there for nature, it could be a very powerful thing. And so I think technology like this, tools like like Project NOAA, these wireless devices and platforms kind of reunite the act of doing and the process of knowing and of, and of learning. And that's powerful, really powerful. So how cool is that? Right? Like, I, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, I, I, you know... As you said, I think we're both really, uh, you know, really uh, sort of uh, enamored with this one. I think this is, a, you know, innovation coming to the surface uh, in terms of actually, you know, using location and mobile services in, in a constructive way, um, you know, getting people out there, uh, you know, sort of citizen uh, engagement, so to speak, uh, but connecting it to sort of, you know, real, real world application and, uh, and, and usefulness. So Project NOAA, NOAA in this case stands for Networked Organisms and Habitats. Uh, you probably figure that out from the, from the video. Um, but th this is cool. This is, uh, you know, iOS and Android uh, app. Um, you know, you and I both, Rob, uh, have, ch have children. And, you know, when I first uh, pulled this story out uh, this week, I was, I was thinking, you know, amazing. Like, you know, it, it's, it's always a challenge in today's world to uh, keep them occupied. Um, and yet, uh, because because their minds are just constantly, uh, you know, wandering and, and, and creative. And, um, and, and yet they're you know, you know, they're 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 growing up with mobile and tablets, and and so to me, this is sort of the perfect mix of you know, you know, something that's fun and and uh, and and useful, and um, you know, can get them uh, really uh, involved in in science and other things really really easily. So I love it, and and, and so as I said, iPhone and Android take photos, um, which they call spottings. You add observations, tag your location. Uh, if, and if you don't know what you found, it connects to this whole Project NOAA community of experts that can help you identify uh, what it is you've got. So simple yet cool. <laughs> so, so well put. Mashable did a great job. I'm just going to read what they said. It's their article on this is, it said, if Charles Darwin created Foursquare, it might look like this. And I think that that's exactly what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. It said... Yeah, you know, uh, your kids have a thousand questions and you might as well put this to good use. And, you know, the perfect example on the website that they're talking about is that like, what kind of beetle? It's right down there. You'll see it. What kind of beetle is this app knows what kind of beetle is. And if it doesn't, it's going to go out and find and ask somebody. And if you discover something, yeah. it'll catalog it. It'll get some expert that reviews this. I think this is this is awesome. I have a good friend who uh, who um who you know wanted to create something like this and and i i think that this is incredible and, and i would uh, implore you to go and take a look at this if you have kids project noah n-o-a-h dot org project noah dot org and uh this is this is crowdsourcing meets uh you know the world this is like seti but for uh for vegetation and wildlife and i i love this stuff i love this stuff this is what mobile's about yeah it's amazing and, and it's and it's actually working i was i was reading uh 
um, one of the, it might have been the Mashable article as well, and like apparently, uh, you know, stuff's already been discovered through this this system. Um, there was some sort of a uh, let me see if I can pull it up quickly here. Uh, but while you're doing that, like I think was, you think about what the the um, the location piece to this is, it's so clear is that it it when you discover it, you take the photo, it tags it, it knows where it is, it knows where it was, it knows where it's discovered, it's cataloged. Man, this is this is. The, this is the cat's ass. Yeah, yeah, and they've even got a um, uh, sort of a, a classroom teacher uh, component to this as well. So I mean, you can you can use this with school. So it's it's pretty cool. Uh, here we go. Uh, some no, no, noteworthy discoveries have already been made through Project Noah, such as the first known photograph of the impatience plant, spotted by by uh, Depesh, uh, sorry, Dapenshu Mitra in India, and the flower had previously only been captured through illustrations. So there you go. Um, like, I mean, it, it, it's already proving itself useful. So, Well, I, I love this. I love this. I'm going to get my kids on this right away. Um, it's, it's like a game. It's like a discovery game. My kids want to be paleontologists and uh, superheroes and astronauts. So paleontologists, yes. at least that's what uh, th this would help a lot as well. And hopefully other industries <laughs> look at this and think, man, we should be doing this. Crowdsourcing information like this uh, and make it, a, make it a game. I love it. So that's great. Oh, projectnoaa.org support the hell out of this this is what mobile is about they should be getting three million in funding not go pogo, pogo. give anyway. some money to project noah yeah. all right our last story here we're going to cruise through it foursquare let's talk about this foursquare trying to figure out how to make some money here um with uh what is this paid search ads and they're talking about now nobody's nobody's confirmed this nobody's denied this but on a good source of a good source of a friend of a good friend of a pal who knows about this stuff who will remain unnamed and anonymous said that this is going to launch in june what what is this thing mm -hmm. yeah i think it's it's pretty much guaranteed this thing's launching in june i've i've also personally talked to people uh brands um who are uh, in discussions to to use this platform? So, um, so, so I, th I, I think it's on, on good authority that it's uh, that it's happening. Um, so, really, what this is is that um, you know when when you use the the explore tab in Foursquare today to find stuff around you and it surfaces up, you know, restaurants or you know activities by category. That same sort of algorithm that they're using in there, they're going to employ to do paid search. Um, you know, ads within Foursquare itself now. So, what does that mean? That means if you've got a special that you want to promote, um, you know, and you're, you know, a Thai restaurant, then, you know, you'll have this ability to kind of, you know, have your special raise above the fold, so to speak, within the app and, and get sort of more visibility and, and, and priority, um, you know, to, you know, create exposure around it. So, you know, not unlike a uh, sponsored tweet uh, or, or things like that, um, you know, very, very similar that way. So apparently they've been, uh, they've been out talking to a lot of the brands that they've worked with in the past, you know, Walgreens, Pepsi, Dunkin' Donuts, Radio Shack, they've done tons with. So guys like that, I expect, you know, they're going to be on this platform pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I love this thing. Um, and, and you know, you just start to see the strategy coming together for Foursquare around this. Uh, you know, whether or not anybody, I, I like the sponsored piece. Like, you know, they worked with Amex that ties in a, a check-in, right, with the yep. Amex card. I love that. And I think that there's a lot of money that these guys mm -hmm. can make with, Foursquare can make in that realm. And, but I like the idea of bringing this down as a lowest common denominator, self-serve. We can get in there. We can buy ads. You know, the whole Google AdWord auction model, I think, would fit very well here. Yes. Um, and, and even this, you know, kind of looks the way that Twitter is monetizing as well with their supported or paid um, uh, Twitter posts, the ones that stick at the top. There's a whole bunch of options here as long as they don't clutter it up, as long as they don't make a mess out of this, as long as they don't. It's about it's about yeah. UX, right? I mean, it, it has to look good in the design, but but functionally, I think this makes sense for them, and I think I think they're going to make some actually make some money. So yes, there you go, Foursquare. You know, seventy five thousand dollars for uh, you know custom badges. Yeah, it's kind of done. Yeah, I think. I, I'm I'm with you on that. That didn't work for one other company. It's not going to work for these guys. I do have a question yeah. though. Remember we talked about it? I think maybe it was. Uh, uh, six or seven months ago, and we said, "Listen, if Foursquare doesn't hit twenty million by the end of twenty eleven, do you think that they've lost um, they've lost momentum?" And, and um, so they hit twenty million recently, like in the last couple of weeks. Yep. So they're six months. We're, wait, no, we're not. We're four months into the year. Um, so their 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 trajectory has slowed considerably. Well, Instagram says you know is obviously accelerated to a mass. 
Uh, you know, and I think that there's speculation that that Foursquare is not going to last as a standalone company. That's my speculation. I think that a company like Facebook, which this kind of pits them right against Facebook, I think Facebook is in the same space or trying to get in this space. Do we think that this is going to happen, that, that Foursquare is going to find that right business model to avoid being acquired? Or, you know, some 50 or $70 million into Foursquare, the venture capitalist is going to look at this and say, look, we got to get out. Now's the time to do it. Look what Instagram got, even if it's three or $400 million in cash and the rest in stock. Do we start to see this happening where Foursquare is not going to be able to survive on its own, even by doing this? Um, do you think that, that this is the year that Foursquare just disappears, that it gets absorbed? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of in that camp. I, I think that uh, you know they're going to continue to grow, but you know the pace has certainly slowed. I, you know, I, I, realistically, I think you know they'll hit 25 million or so by the end of the year. Um, but and they'll start to generate some some revenues, you know, through this kind of an ad model like we're talking about here. But I think it's really just you know um, let's create some some real revenue. Let's, let's start to put some some cash on the balance sheet. You know, 25 million users, nothing to sneeze at, um, but it's, it's really, you know, sort of lining up nicely to be taken out uh, and merged with something else. Um, and I'm definitely in that camp. So, All right. Well, you heard it out here. We're April 29th. We've been calling this for a while, but uh, Foursquare. Well, Foursquare, at least they're, they're looking at making revenue, and I think that that's good. They're, they're testing the waters, and I think that that's really good news. And look, we had Kodak trying to make some money in this. We had uh, Mobile Transit trying to make some money on this. We had um, Project Noah not trying to make some money on this, but certainly some some social good. And now we have Foursquare trying to make some money on this. And then we have, obviously, GoPo Go, which is uh, the jury's out. But um, guys like me who can't remember where they were yesterday, um, GoPo Go might, might be the perfect thing. Those are the five stories yeah. that we brought, that Asif brought to you. If you like them, dislike them, think that we missed a few, reach out on tethergmail.com or Asif at the LBMA. And of course, if you have any comments or suggestions or critiques, critiques go to Asif. Comments and compliments come to me. I'll make sure he gets them, I'm sure. Those are the five stories. Let's talk about our special guest, Alexis Zamkow. You got to sit with her this week. Talk about Alexis. Yeah, Alexis is a uh, super smart, uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, mind around location uh, data, location intelligence. So Alexis is the um, general manager of data and targeting solutions at Canada Post Digital Delivery Network. Um, and uh, yeah, I had a chance to sit down with her and, um, you know, uh, I'll let her tell it in her own words in terms of what they do and, and why why we should be paying attention to it. Because I do think there's a lot of value there. I think every postal service, for that matter, uh, has a lot of great data and a lot of history and a lot of knowledge on how you unlock, um, you know, the value of, of how that can be layered into apps and location services and geofencing and everything else that comes with that. Um, but And, uh, and Canada Post is, is, is one of those that has great solutions in this market. So here it is from Alexis. Well, it's uh, time for our guest on This Week in Location-Based Marketing, and today it's my pleasure to have Alexis Samkow, General Manager for Data and Targeting uh, Solutions at Canada Post Digital Delivery Network. Alexis, welcome to This Week in Location-Based Marketing. Thanks, Asif. Thanks for having me. It's uh, very exciting to be here and talking about location intelligence. Location has been a very important part of the Canada Post heritage. Our position as connecting businesses and consumers in Canada, it's a legacy and it continues today. But what's important is there's some big changes going on as it relates to how we're leveraging location intelligence to help marketers and businesses be more effective. We've always used our location to help drive our mail business, but we recognize that location can do so much more. Marketers today need location to be able to aggregate their data, to clean their data, to effectively build big data solutions. And consumers are more and more demanding that the information that they get is location relevant. They want content that's close to them. They want locations they can easily get to and navigate. And it doesn't make a difference if it's in the mail or if it's mobile or online. Everything seems to be centering around the importance of location. So Canada Post is committed to being a big player in this space. And I'm going to share a little bit about some of the things that we're doing and some things we're seeing in the marketplace with you. So as I mentioned, location has always been a, fun, a fundamental component of our databases, but we also know that there's a lot of underlying information that we have that could be really valuable to consumers of our data. 
we have information about addresses and we have information about movers. Movers account for over 800,000 households in Canada every year. And for them, they're going through one of the biggest location transitions of their lives. That information is critical for marketers because, frankly, those 800,000 customers could represent your best customers that are moving and it could be at risk or they could be great new prospects. We know that when customers move, over 71% of them say, I'm willing to make a change with the providers that I have today. So the fact that they've moved location means something really important to marketers. So having a handle on that information is critical. And Canada Post is uniquely positioned to give access to that information to marketers. In addition, we know that location is important when you're putting a message in the marketplace. Research shows that you'll only go so far for a 10% discount. But if you offer varying discounts based on where that consumer is in relation to your location, you could get a better return on investment. Being sensitive to your trade area is critical. Uh, we do a lot of work with retailers and financial institutions about defining their trade areas. Um, trade areas used to be defined by radius, and that's old-time thinking. What we're doing now is we're applying drive times and drive distances and creating what we call unstructured trade areas. This allows features such as major road networks or even geographic boundaries to be factored into your trade area so you're not wasting messages to customers who can't even get to your store in a reasonable amount of time. So location is getting, weaving its way into our targeting and how we're doing our location intelligence for GIS solutions for a lot of our unaddressed and addressed customers. We also know that location is a fundamental building block for a lot of overlay data. So when I talk to customers and they say, you know, census is critical to me, or I use lifestyle clusters, all that information is always appended at the location. So if you don't have the right location against your customer or prospect, you're not going to be able to append data. So working with some of the biggest names of data in Canada, we work with Enveronics, we work with DMTI, Stats Canada, um, uh, we also work with Gen5. We're bringing together assets across a wide spectrum of companies, appending it to our data, and then giving customers a way to get access to that. So we've got some new tools in the marketplace, and these tools are all about giving consistent, accurate data, it's comprehensive, in a way that can be easily consumed. So we've recently launched a, a product called Precision Targeter. It's a state-of-the-art GIS targeting solution. It lets uh, a, a marketer go in and uh, in a nice, simple GIS interface, plot their location. They can see uh, the, the geographic boundaries around the location. They can look at radius and drive time. They can analyze the census demographics in and around their location. And then they can pick and choose which customers they want to communicate with. It's a self-serve tool, hands-on, and it's quite innovative. It can go all the way through to induction of mail. So that's one way that we're looking at bringing location intelligence right to your desktop. We're also introduced, we've just introduced um, a cleansing tool that allows you to self-serve self and clean your data. It'll do um, an update on, it'll suppress, do suppression, it'll allow you to do a national change of address and address accuracy. Mm -hmm. Helps you clean your files and diagnose, diagnose if there's any issues with your data. So those are just some of the basic tools that we have in the marketplace today, but there's a lot of more advanced tools that customers are looking for. So coming to Canada Post, we have a suite of, uh, of services that offer more advanced analytics, so segmentation, predictive modeling. And we take all that great data that I mentioned, and we help apply that to your databases and help build you some innovative solutions. So the future isn't just about the location physically, it's also about electronic location. And that's where Canada Post is going in the, in the future. Um, we, all, we currently have our ePost solution, which allows you to uh, receive your bills online. That's going to be expanded, and uh, we see that that is an excellent way that we can communicate in an electronic format as well as a physical format. Because, frankly, customers want multi-directional communication, and it needs to be the way that a consumer wants to absorb it, electronically or physically. So location is woven through all of our solutions. It's a foundation for our business, and it's a foundation for improved return on investment. And we're very excited to be part of the LVMA and promoting how location can help everyone to do better marketing. Great, Alexis. Thank you so much for uh, sort of sharing the vision and uh, you know the the insights that you guys have at Canada Post. I think there's just so much wealth of of knowledge and data and 
history of, 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 you know, sort of the power of location intelligence and what you can do and some of the partners that you mentioned that you're working with, um, you know, it's really exciting uh, to see. So, you know, we really appreciate, uh, you know, Canada Post being involved with the LBMA and, and your sponsorship of the, of the podcast this month. And, you know, so just, you know, from me to you personally, you know, thank you for uh, for being, getting behind us and supporting and, uh, you know, really happy that we had this chance to sit down with you today and, you uh, and uh, just get a little bit more insight uh, in, into the world of location intelligence from a Canada Post perspective. So thanks for being on the show. My pleasure, Steve. Take care. Cheers. Well, that was Alexis Zamka from Canada Post. And again, thanks to, to Alexis and thanks to to Canada Post uh, for sponsoring our podcast for this this entire month. Uh, we, we truly appreciate it, um, and uh, we look forward to uh, to working with you guys in the future. But you know, as you saw there, and you, and you heard from Alexis, I mean, there's just so much power that, that sits inside these uh, these these corporations, these postal uh, organizations, and you know that sort of marriage of census data, real time location data. It's all about data at the end of the day, and um, you know, I, I think that uh, people should be paying more attention to sort of these tradition, more traditional sort sources of data and, uh, and and some of the services that are that are available there so if you get a chance please take a look at uh, what Canada Post is doing um, and I, I think you'll be uh, you'll be uh, happily surprised well Canada Post I, I mean these legacy guys we've been waiting for them to come up uh, it's hard to uh, shift an entire organization like Canada Post or the you know the US Postal Service into this world I mean they've been completely disrupted by email uh, you know, all they've done is uh, they've looked at try to ways, figured out ways that they can adjust their business model into this, and and they can't be discounted. Just like the big guys in the location world can't be discounted as well. So good on them for uh, acknowledging where their strengths are and going after them. Very cool. So yeah, thank you, Alexis uh, Zamkow, uh, and thank you, Canada Post, for sponsoring this show. And if you guys want to be a part of this, if you have a product or a service that think it should be featured here, you want to be our special guest, reach out. And tether at gmail.com or seat at the lbma.com. If you want to sponsor us, we're also open to that. We will not take a billion dollars. No way. No way. That's a ripoff. We know that. <laughs> yeah. Even we don't have that kind of reach and no, frequency. No, 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 no. Our Anyhow. mothers watch this. And you. You and our mothers. Thank you guys for watching this. And hi, mom. Asif, do you have anything to say to your mother? No, I'm good. I'm good. My mother doesn't watch. I gotta be honest. <laughs> nice. Neither does mom. She gets embarrassed. All right. So let's yeah. jump into our funding. Hi, hi, Rob. Yeah. How's that? Hi, Rob's mom. That's great. Um, we will let's jump into our funding. Uh, uh, three stories here. All funding stories. No M&A, no, no uh, mergers or no acquisitions, but funding story. The first one, B Media. Oh, here it is. Yes. They acquire ad centricity, uh, but they also acquire the name. So we lose B Media but we keep ad centricity. What's yes. So th this is this is big news in the Canadian market. Um, you know, B Media is a mobile uh, lo uh, location, indoor location shopping uh, app solution. A full disclosure, uh, I sit on the uh, advisor board of uh, of this company. Um, so you know, just just putting that out there. But um, yeah, they acquired Ad Centricity. Ad Centricity is uh, one of the largest aggregators of digital out of home networks um, in uh, in North America, uh, representing uh, something like ninety six or ninety seven different uh, network providers. Um, so basically, if you've got uh, digital out of home inventory, um, screen media inventory, you know GameStop, um, you know medical network uh, uh, networks and doctors' offices, whatever it is, retail, um, etc. These guys represent it. So what we have here is the mashup of, um, you know, location-based targeting at digital screen networks uh, with mobile shopping uh, location services. So I think this is a great fit, and it kind of comes right back to what you know what we talk about all the time. You know that need to sort of you know start to look for integration of media uh, across channels, across across different medium channels uh, because it's all location. Very cool. Very cool. And and we don't have any terms on that. No, none were disclosed. None were disclosed. But I'm sure if you called to see if you would, you would have a little bit of insight. <laughs> yeah. Second story. So I totally, totally missed that. You know, that was an acquisition. Now let's talk about some uh, some money. So this co this company, Get Me Listed, closes their seed round. It's a small round, but uh, never heard of Get Me Listed. But uh, like apparently, it, it eases the friction for SEO. 
It does. Um, and, and actually, this is a Montreal-based company. So, Love uh, Canada. We're still in Love Canada. Canada. We're, don't, don't worry. We're leaving Canada on the next story. But uh, Get Me Listed. Uh, so this is a company I actually know fairly well. Um, Michael Muir uh, is a guy who, uh, who runs this thing or one of the founders. Um, and, um, you know, just quick plug here. I mentioned at the top, uh, June 7th, uh, the LBMA is launching in Montreal, uh, and it's sponsored actually by, uh, by get me listed. Um, and so, um, you know, great, great connection there. So these guys, uh, got some money from real ventures, uh, Mark McLeod and company over there, one of the bigger, uh, VCs in the Montreal market. Yeah. Th- and th- they're a, um, they're a local search, uh, geo targeting, um, sort of local listing uh, type of organization. And there's a lot of players in this space and, and there's a lot of challenges in this space. You know, when we look at, you know, sort of, um, you know, local data, place-based data, you know, uh, accuracy uh, around that data. Um, and, you know, I can get into hours of conversation around this stuff, but Get Me Listed is one of the companies that's that's really working at, on this. So congrats on raising some money. Look forward to seeing these guys on June 7th in Montreal. And if you're in Montreal uh, and, you, and you're watching this, you know, mark that date. We we hope to see you. Um, details will be up shortly on the LBMA site for that. You can be sure we'll push that here for sure. We'll we'll let you know. You can stay yeah. here. Stay tuned for all of that. Rob might even have all the way from Montreal or from Ottawa. To Montreal's come to close. Day. Toronto's not so close as you quickly realize. <laughs> all right, our last piece here. I I you know this is this is a cool company, but I I you know what I can't help but think that uh, again. I think that Twitter missed out on Instagram. I think that Twitter missed out on doing something like Chirpify. I think that Chirpify is an acquisition target for uh, for uh, for Twitter. They should happen this year. This is a pretty cool. They've turned on uh, purchases um, and commerce through Twitter posts that are tied to your PayPal account. They raised some money. Yeah, so this this is in some respects this is very similar, I would say, to um, the Amex Foursquare Amex uh, Twitter partnerships, except that the connection here is through PayPal. They ra- they've raised one point three million, um, and you know from some guy pedigree. So this is uh, um, uh, Andy Liu from uh, Buddy TV uh, and Ryan Holmes, uh, who I know fairly well. Uh, Ryan uh, is is uh, one of the founders of Hootsuite, so you know obviously understands Twitter um, and analytics on top of Twitter. So, you know he's uh, he's uh, hedging his bets here and going into Twitter payments. So, uh, yeah, and um, and uh, a guy named Rudy Godre, uh, who's uh, ex Facebook. So uh, they got they got some good guys behind this. Yeah, and it's, so it's it's not a Canadian company, but Hootsuite, Vancouver based, right? Um, there you go. So, yeah. Getting into this, and I, uh, you know, this this is one of those things that that I think that the uh, seamless or frictionless uh, transactions and commerce is exactly what I want. And, and the perfect example of this is music, you know, where where um, you can influence your followers on Twitter if they're actually engaged to say, "Listen, hey, buy my new single now." All you have to do is at me with a buy, and it's tied sure. into your PayPal account. You've bought that product, you know. That that's. When you start to get that easy, right, it, it, it just comes down to it's the iTunes uh, method where your credit card is behind the scenes. You can spend a whole lot yep. of money any uh, in the app stores or in iTunes simply because of the way that they've made this frictionless commerce. And I think that this is that piece. But I, I, I can't see um, Twitter not picking these guys up or doing the same thing. And Twitter's just looking at these guys going like, what did we miss? <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. So yeah. Chirpify, I, I like these guys a lot. I love the frictionless piece of commerce, and I love the fact that this could play into mobile, right? It could be that bridge that uh, we're waiting for in the mobile payment space. Screw NFC when I can just add somebody and pay it this way with a with a like a provider like PayPal or whomever Square behind this. I think it's great. I think it's great. No, it makes sense. And they've already tested yeah. this. So at South by Southwest, they were using it. Uh, so it's not like it's just coming out. They've been they've been trying it with bands and artists. They ran a thing called Tweet a Beer uh, service where you could buy your friends a beer at South by Southwest simply by you know sending a Twitter message. Um, so yeah, uh, love it, love it, love it. Chirpify one point three million. So that's it. One acquisition, two raises, small raises. These are good. This is smart raises. Uh, you know, if we missed anything. Reach out on tethergmail.com or see at the LBMA. Our last piece, we'll make this quick, a resource of the week. What is this thing? Mobile Life Study. This is pretty cool. This is awesome. Um, you know, obviously, we, I look at a lot of uh, studies out there. Um, and when I came across this one this week, this is from TNS Cantor Group. 
Um, so just go to tnsglobal.com. Uh, I'm sure Rob will put the link up there. Uh, mobile Life Study. What I love about it is, is that the, th the thing is global. It's not just one market. They looked at all sorts of markets. They look at you know um, the population, smartphone penetration, feature phone penetration. You can break it down as to how many people are using location-based services now, how many people are interested in, in using them in the future, by market, um, you know, you know it, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, Wi-Fi, who's using it, social networking, who's doing it. You can look at, um, you know, the types of apps uh, by function. So, you know, recipe apps, entertainment apps, uh, shopping apps, you know, like it, it's amazing. I love that. Uh, I love that farming apps. 98 percent yeah, are it's not a interesting. interactive site so you just click on the things and you can start to segment the yeah. data and I love it it's, it's really really cool so can, you know great job by these guys um, and uh, would love to if you're listening uh, guys at canner TNS uh, give me a call or send an email this week uh, I'd love to uh, get get some of this data segmented and presented at, uh, at some of our events so yeah, Anyhow, it's crazy, and, and what I love about it as well is I got it up on the screen there. Is that like when you pull up the U.S., it says the number of mobile. So the number of people in the U.S. three hundred thirteen million, number of mobiles two hundred seventy eight point yep. nine million, and I just did Canada up there for a while just because we are in Canada. Twenty four, uh, thirty four million people in Canada, twenty four million uh, mobiles. We have a high p concentration presentation, but the difference is both Canada and the U.S. ninety eight percent are not interested in knowing about farming apps. There you go. Who knew? Well, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. So yeah, tnsglobal.com. There is a link up uh, up here. Uh, if you're not there, just uh, just go to tnsglobal.com, and this is called Mobile Life, or you can just do a TNS, uh, TNS Global and Mobile Life search in whatever search engine you choose. Um, great, great, great resource, and uh, certainly uh, shows shows the opportunity that this space has. That's it. 75 done. We're done. Episode 75. I'm going to start drinking hard alcohol now that I'm 75. 65, I went back to school and started smoking. <coughs> Hence the voice. Yeah. 75, I'm going to start drinking hard alcohol. I think if I make it to 85, it's going to be some kind of hard drug. That's what we're going to be doing. Just pick all it right. all up again. Well, enjoy it. Enjoy it for me yes. as well. So This has been episode number 75 of This Week in Location-Based Marketing. If we have said something that offended you or surprised you or interested you, please reach out. We would love some Twitter love, some Facebook love, any way that you can promote this. LinkedIn love. We would love you to push this out. If you enjoyed it, tell a few friends. If you love it so much, subscribe on iTunes because that's where you can get it ahead of time, either in a video or a audio podcast version. If you love it so much, I'd also, why don't you reach out and tell us? Um, or just arbitrarily reach out to somebody that we've mentioned in this podcast and say, hey, we heard about you on This Week in Location-Based Marketing. You guys should be on that show. Whatever it is, we really appreciate you guys listening and uh, or watching wherever you are. Um, it's It's been a blast doing number 75. We will be back. Yeah, Thanks, no problem. Rob. We'll be back next week for episode number 76. And in the interim, if you have a story, reach out, please. We'd love to hear from you. Until then, Asif and everybody listening or watching, See you next week. All right. Bye, guys.